Hey guys, Drudder here. It's February the 8th, 2010. Can't really believe the weather we've been having. Haven't hardly had a single snowfall this entire winter. And it certainly doesn't feel like winter right now. I'm out here in my shorts and t-shirt, sitting out in the Drudder garden, planning out my planting that I'll be doing in a couple months. Looks like we're having an early spring. It's too bad for the Olympics, which is happening next week, just around the corner. I don't think they're very happy about it. The rest of the continent's in a deep freeze, and here in BC we're 14 degrees above Celsius. Anyways, um, where does silver come from? The reason I have the camera aimed at the sky is because that is where silver comes from. Not any particular god or gods that us humans tend to make up, but from stars, like our own sun. This may be a bit of a review for a lot of people, but I think some people don't know this. Every atom of silver in existence in the universe was created inside a star. Um, Here's a brief history of the universe. About 14 billion years ago, yes, we can calculate exactly when it began, the present universe as we know it originated from a point of very high amounts of energy and mass in one spot and has since been spreading itself thinner over time throughout space, I guess you'd say. Um, all molecules, and they believe it was just hydrogen and helium originally, um, are spreading out. And in some areas, there's almost no matter, and um, you'd call that empty space. And in some areas, there's a little bit more matter. And in some areas, there's a lot of matter in one spot, and that's because of gravity. Gravity pulls every atom in the universe towards every other atom in the universe, no matter how far away it is. So, <clears throat> Matter quickly coalesced into great big balls of matter because it, well, because of gravity. And when you get that much matter in one spot, it starts to press against each other and it starts to crush each other and it starts to heat up, especially towards the middle of these large blobs. And that's what happens uh, to stars. Eventually, the matter, which is originally was just he helium and hydrogen, got hot enough and then it turned on. In other words, it became a star and it started to glow. And it started to... the reason it's glowing is because it is a nuclear reaction, a very, very large nuclear reaction that's taking place and continues to take place. There's so much helium and hydrogen up in the sun, in our sun, that it's been burning for millions of years and it will continue to do so <clears throat> for a very, 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 very long time to come before it even starts to run out of fuel. So in these nuclear reactions, the hydrogen and helium, which are very, very simple atoms, just a proton and a neutron and an electron, but depending on if you're talking about hydrogen or helium, he hydrogen doesn't have a neutron. But anyways, um, these three simple particles, uh, electrons, protons, and neutrons, combine together to form every bit of matter that exists. This is going to be a long video, I can tell. <clears throat> um, anyhow, inside the star, that process continues through the life of the star, and it's converting hydrogen into helium, for example, and into slightly heavier elements. Eventually, the star runs out of the hydrogen and helium, and it starts to combine the helium atoms together, and helium atoms with hydrogen atoms, and those molecules get added onto, and eventually you have some fairly large molecules that contain dozens of helium and hydrogen atoms all combined. And those atoms are atoms like carbon and nitrogen and oxygen, the atoms that make up life. So yes, every atom in your body was once part of a star. And in some stars that are big enough and heavy enough and old enough and massive enough, there's so much pressure and density in the core of 
of these stars that neutrons themselves are free floating and end up attaching themselves onto other atoms and this is how we can build very large atoms like silver and gold so you are looking at a creator of silver I don't think our Sun is making a lot of silver at this point but maybe a long time down the road it will how did the silver get from that star into the Canadian maple that's in your bullion collection well when a star is dead, in other words, it's used up all of its energy and it reaches a certain point, it will, well, there's a lot of different things it can do depending on its size, but certain stars explode and when they explode they send all of their elements back out into space in a supernova, and um, which are incredibly rare events, but there are just so many galaxies out there and so many stars in each galaxy over a hundred billion stars in each galaxy alone and over a hundred billion galaxies out there there are so many stars and the universe is so old that there have been a lot of supernova supernovae I think it is anyway that's how silver gets out into the universe that's how it was created you know, there was none there was no silver originally just hydrogen I believe hydrogen and helium and from there um, we have slowly accumulated silver throughout the universe over 14 billion years so if you think about it that way I guess you could say that the amount of silver in the universe is increasing over time but um, here on earth we do have a limited supply and uh, we are using it up and running a bit low um, price isn't reflecting that right now we're down to fifteen dollars an ounce but um, that's just for electronic silver we're not talking about the actual atoms that you can hold in your hand that's it for today I am signing off I hope that was at least moderately interesting and um, I realize it's a, a bit uh, simplified and uh, I probably got a few things slightly wrong as well it's been a while since I was in physics and chemistry but them's the basics hope you're having a good day keep on stacking